All right, so uh, as he said, I'm Adam Smith. I'm Vice President of BizDev at Automated Insights. Very excited to speak with you today. I've really enjoyed the conference so far. There's been a, a lot of great sessions. Uh, many of them have hit on a key area of data analysis that is very close to our hearts at AI, uh, which is how do you present data in a way that is actionable and drives understanding? Most of them have actually talked about telling stories with data or getting the story out of data. And we wholeheartedly agree about how important that is. The problem is that charts and graphs actually don't tell a story. Words do. And that's what we do at Automated Insights. We have a technology that we call Wordsmith. It's a natural language generation engine. And what we do is uh, essentially we take a structured data set, like you see on the left here, mine that for patterns, trends, correlations uh, that might be interesting to a specific reader, insights about that specific reader in a data set, and then write a story about it. Just like a human would, but it's totally machine generated and automated with the personality, variability, and tone of a human author, but it's machine written. So think about it like a data scientist, like if you were actually sitting down in front of a data set, you needed to communicate with an employee or report to a customer, um, and essentially codifying that data scientist's um, expertise and allowing them to report um, in an automated fashion, pulling out those insights, tailoring to them to that specific reader and delivering them a story uh, totally powered uh, by software. So we published over a billion stories last year for some of the biggest companies in the world, um, basically taking their data, producing those stories in a wide variety of verticals, basically anything with structured data, everything from business intelligence and analytics uh, to internal reporting to quantified self and personal fitness, internet of things, fantasy football, sports, uh, real estate, finance, and more. But we're here today to talk about one of those customers, and that's the Associated Press. And in, in the talk before, it was about uh, companies that have a long history, old companies kind of innovating, using big data to innovate, and that's exactly what AP wanted to do. They're a 170-year-old organization, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about how we help them scale uh, through this robot reporters, but essentially taking data and producing stories uh, to help them scale their reporting by, by 10x. Uh, so what we did for them was essentially take raw data like this um, around public company earnings filings um, to produce reports like this. So machine generated, completely automated stories that read and sound as if they were written by a seasoned AP reporter, uh, but totally machine generated. But before we dive into that, I'd like to take just a quick step back. This, the Associated Press, what we'll talk about, the articles we're going to show you, it's just another way to think about data. It's another way to present data, to take that data in, to try to make it, uh, to communicate it in a way that's easy for people to digest, and that's the written word. Um, but I'd like to take a step back and think about how we communicate about data today. So I've got a quick video, uh, which is always dangerous, hopefully it works. Um, but I'd like to show it just to show a day in the life that I think we've all run into these issues about uh, either communicating with or being communicated to uh, via dashboard or uh, with data. Mr. Smith, here are your test results and we'll see you in six months. Does this mean I'm okay or doctor? So you're here for your performance review today. Uh, luckily, I have it here for your pleasure. Did I do okay, or? Uh, I've called a data scientist in here to help us figure it out. <laughs> what? <laughs> this graph shows that your leadership quotient has plummeted by 42% this quarter. What is that graph? I don't have time for this right now. I've got 30 of these to do this afternoon. Will you make me the happiest man alive? Well, as you can see from the charts over here, I do have some concerns. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. So, well, how do you know you're in a growing startup? You actually have to be in the video that you're using as an example. So, I apologize for the acting skills. But um, 
it's really, you know, thinking about that video, use it as kind of a ridiculous example, and it's silly to think that you'd actually try to communicate with people that way, but we're actually doing it every day with our mission critical data. We're going to our employees, we're going to our customers. In the AP's case, they're going to their users and readers and, and trying to give them something, give them data that then they have to interpret. And basically, any time you put a dashboard in, somebody, in front of somebody, that's what you're asking them to do. You're asking them to find the patterns. You're asking them to go through the mental gymnastics of interpreting that data, finding the pattern that's interesting for them, finding the pattern that might change their performance or help them, and then act on that. And in most cases, as I've heard in many of these panels uh, leading up to today, uh, business users and customers are actually, they already have too much data, right? They don't want to go through the problem of analyzing. They just want to be told, what does it mean for me, and what do I do? And if you could sit down with those users and tell them personally, hey, this is what it means for you, these are the graphs you need to pay attention to, this is what you need to do to act, act on this data, you would. The problem is just there's no way to scale that out with people. And so there's a lot of tools to help visualize data and communicate visually like Tableau. But we believe the next step is, is natural language generation, and that's the presentation layer for big data. It's helping people act on data by just telling them that what's going on in an easy to digest way, again, the written word. And the end goal with natural language generation like WordSmith is to help data scientists, and in AP's case, their reporters, um, communicate in a one-on-one -on -one way with every customer to essentially tell them what's going on, but spend less time actually doing that. Let a technology actually deliver that information and tell that person how to interact with the data and where to go within the dashboard so that that data scientist can spend more time on the big data problems affecting their business and less on reporting. And for a reporter, they can spend more time on investigative journalism and less on data analysis. So the last point I'll, I'll hit on, on, on in this area is there's a data density to words. When you're trying to communicate a thought or a pattern or something going on in data, you may put together four or five graphs. You try to guide that person through that experience so they can figure out what's going on and what it means to them. In this case, you're, you're saying, okay, here's all the information you need to figure out whether this company performed well this quarter or not. Instead, with words, all, you, all they have to do is read. You can say they had a strong quarter. There's a lot of data going up into the choice of that word. And with a technology like natural language generation, you can just tell them what's going on and help make that dashboard more effective. So back to the uh, Associated Press, they essentially had this problem. They were taking earnings reports that companies would put out on the wire, public companies, having their reporters sit down and start to write stories on that. So they would have to go through, review that financial filing, see if there was anything interesting going on, look at past filings if they had time, write that down and write a report about what it means for the company and how the company is going. Um, but they were only doing about 300 a quarter. That's all they could handle with people. And the other problem was those reporters were actually, uh, you know, you have to get it out to the wire really quickly. For the AP, it's extremely important that when the company files, you've got that information about what it means for the company out as soon as possible. The longer it goes, the less relevant the story is. So they had the reporters working on these stories, but the problem was uh, the reporters were having to do more data analysis than be investigative journalists or reporters in general. Um, and like a lot of data-related reporting, it's tedious. Uh, it can be over really repetitive to do by hand, and as you can see, the reporters themselves had some stuff to say about the whole process because they weren't able to really tell the story about the company. They were just trying to get the story out as quick as they could and were only able to report about the facts, even with a, a standard format that they had to follow about how the AP wanted them to report around that. So they knew they had a problem, uh, which was good for us as they came to us to talk about natural language generation. Um, so what did we do for them? Um, we came up with the story they wanted to tell around that data how they wanted to report on those public companies. And then we worked with Zacks, which is a financial information provider, to create a quick feed uh, that when a company filed their earnings report, when a public company put that earnings report out on the wire, um, that that data would be structured in such a way that Zacks could send to us. We could take that and power our reports for the AP so that we could uh, produce those stories. We bring the data in from Zacks, uh, like probably a lot of people in this room uh, were on the cloud, we're on Amazon Web Services. We use S3 to put that data in, to store that data so that we can quickly do historical and cohort analysis as we get new more information in. 
Um, and then we produce the narrative and we publish that out via SQS uh, to the AP uh, or the Amazon's SQS service. Um, with a lot of our clients, we're actually hosting directly for them, or we might publish directly for them via email, PDF, web, mobile, social, whatever it is they need. But with the AP, it's an actual JSON feed that they consume and then publish out to the wire. So what happened at the end of the day? Um, so leveraging that Zach's data, we helped the AP go from 300 companies a quarter uh, to well over 3,000, um, and they're growing from there. So they're automatically published directly to the wire seconds after we get the earnings, after they come out, all in the AP style and tone. So as you can see here, as the word got out that the AP was producing stories through robots, um, the typical <laughs> angle that other reporters took was, you know, all HAL, Terminator, um, kind of robot overlord angle, which we, we get a kick out of. Um, but again, you know, Natural language generation is not uh, an overlord, at least not yet. Uh, it's essentially a tool for data professionals to allow them to use computers for what they're good at, which is analyzing large swaths of data, finding the patterns and trends within that data, and then telling you the what of what's going on, especially if you can communicate it um, via, via words. Um, and then on the other hand, you open humans up to do what they're good at, which is add the color, add the context, um, the why to the story. And so the, this project with the AP is actually a good example of, of humans and software, or humans and machines working well together. Um, we publish those stories directly to the wire, but we also give the AP an editor where they can actually go in, add quotes, add context, add color, add other things that they may have in the story that aren't part of that data feed. And we do this with a lot of our business intelligence and finance implementations where we'll build an editor. This is just an example from uh, something we do around Google Analytics. Uh, called Wordsmith for Marketing. You can go in, you can change every single word. You could either publish it directly or you could change, you could add sections, remove sections, add graphs, take them away. Um, and, that, and that's exactly what the AP is doing. They're having those stories published directly to the wire, but for some, like Amazon or Apple or Google or those 300 that they were already doing by hand, they can go back in and they can edit those stories and that's what they're doing, adding more quotes, adding more color, revisiting those stories and doing the investigative journalism that makes the AP the AP. Um, and so, you know, the, the nice part about that is that they're able to uh, probably actually write by hand way more than the 300 they were doing. Because 4,000 of them are put out on the wire uh, right away, they can go in and spend time on adding color into a lot more companies than just being kind of down to the wire trying to get that story out and just get the core information they need out there. Um, and a lot of times, there's actually information, cultural items driving change that are not in a data feed. So there might be a, country, there might be a company that's doing business in Russia, for example. It's had its worst quarter in the last couple of years, maybe three years. We're going to talk about that. We're going to point that out in the earnings filing. But what's not in the data is what's going on in the Ukraine causing that problem, right? The human's going to know that. It's not necessarily in the data feed, but they have the time to go in and add that in. Um, because they're not focused on just doing that, that regular data analysis. So what are the results of the AP implementation? Well, it's been better for their customers because we're producing 10x more than they were before than they were ever able to. So they're able to cover local public companies, basically all the public companies out there in the US, and their local syndicate partners, the actual local papers, are actually able to have coverage of companies that they never had before, the local companies people are interested in. Their reporters are, have been freed up to do more stories. They actually haven't cut any jobs. They've just added more content. Um, of course, it's a, a greater throughput, not just a throughput, but speed. We're getting out there seconds after we get the data as opposed to uh, hours. Um, and then there's actually fewer errors, um, both in data and in grammar and all those kind of things, than when it was written by human. So we're expanding our relationship with the AP. Uh, we're covering more companies. We're going to be going international. We'll probably be doing other topics uh, you know, with other financial feeds and hopefully other verticals such as sports. Um, but in conclusion, um, this AP, these AP reports we've talked about today are just another way of leveraging technology to tell a story, to communicate understanding um, off of data in a way that people can grok quickly. And natural language generation like Wordsmith, the nice part about it is you can tailor a story to one user among millions. 
whether you have tens of thousands of employees or you've got millions and millions of users, take their data and instead of trying to communicate through a dashboard, tell them a story that like you sat down and wrote it for them about how they're changing over time, how they fit in with cohort groups of people like them, how they relate to the whole aggregate data set that you have and allow them to understand themselves in a way that they couldn't otherwise because it's just foreign about them um, as opposed to them trying to uh, learn it off a dashboard. Um, so as you think about your uh, data science initiatives, whether they're internal or external, um, all I would say in conclusion is, is just make sure you plan to think about how you present that data, right? Because there's a story locked in that data and to the extent you can communicate it in a way that people can quickly understand it and get it, that's really key. Otherwise, you're just collecting data and there's no real hope of, of driving action from it. Um, so thanks very much. I don't know if there's time for questions or this way we got two minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, luckily we had communicated with, a, or we had published stories for a lot of those, those other companies that you saw up there. Um, but we were able to uh, essentially go through, go through a process of, we go through a validation process where we'll run thousands of past reports off historical data. So they have a sense to look at, you know, hundreds, thousands of examples off that historical data and, and validate there both through machine and human QA and kind of see what that report will look like way before they ever push anything live. And so we did a rollout with them where I think the news came out in July of, of last year where we started doing them, but they actually just, you know, had their editors as a layer before it. So we would publish a story, an editor would review it, then publish it to the wire. Um, I think it was in October we actually to that point, they realized there were less errors. It was actually coming out faster, and they started publishing directly. And the next phase is adding to expanding those stories, expanding to more different types of stories in that, that way. Yeah, as far as uh, just within WordSmith, as a, so there's really two parts of the technology. The first is a, a BI engine where you know, we're looking for patterns, trends, correlations in that data. A lot of times we'll be bringing in different data sets from different places and we're building custom calcs and ranks to help us understand kind of what's going on with the data. And the second part is the linguistics engine where you know, we validated that in multiple different spaces where you're actually applying um, you know, natural language to that. Right, and so um, in a lot of cases there, we've got um, essentially things baked into the technology where we can control for tone of the author. So whether you want, like when we publish with Yahoo, we get snarky in these fantasy football recaps, where with the AP, you need, they have a very strict, obviously, the AP, AP style guide um, where you can form there. So we can, we can change that, and then we can also um, um, adjust for the nomenclature of that specific vertical. We have experimented with a, a couple things uh, outside of English. We've done reports in German and we've done reports in Spanish. Um, it's not, we're not widely publishing in other languages yet, but it is an area that we want to go forward with. Part of what we're trying to do is we're controlling every word and every sentence. And so what we want to do is if we've told you this sentence before, we don't want to give you that sentence again. Because just like a dashboard can get boring over time, you can reach a baseline effect of, oh, I've seen this graph over and over. If you're just doing templated text, that the same thing will happen. So what uh, we focus on is the ability to say, okay, we've given them that sentence. What else can we say? Can we use different adjectives? Can we structure the sentence in a different way? Can we compare it to something new to give it, uh, you know, to keep it fresh and keep it sticky? Um, and those are some of the challenges as you as you start to move into other languages. Not only uh, keeping that language flexible and variable and sounding like a human, but sounding native, you know, so that you're using the right slang and so that you're talking in the right way. That's right, yeah. I like that very much. Um, my question is, um, apart from AP, is there like a business specific use case where like you're creating a, like instead of a dashboard, can we show something like this uh, in a CIO, CEO meeting or something like a business perspective? Yeah, so the, the question was around, um, you know, this was a great kind of publishing to the media, publishing around a, a specific set of data and publishing a story about it. Like we do that with admins in, in automotives. But could you publish in a business perspective to CEO, CIO? We work with one of the largest insurance companies in the world. 
Um, and we do just that. We're doing it around their, their sales organization where they've got you know, tens of thousands of agents. They need to communicate effectively to those agents and they're doing it via Tableau and a number of other methods, homegrown kind of uh, dashboarding system, but not seeing action driving off of that. So we are actually tailoring stories um, to each individual agent and then to the, the leaders above them and the territory managers above them and the executives above them so that each person gets the data aggregated in a way that's, that's interesting for that person and hopefully makes that dashboard more actionable because you could say, hey, here's the five things going on in your market. Here's the three things you need to think about. Try this, this, and this and actually send it to them so they can quickly move on about their day. And you know, we do that with uh, uh, franchises. We do it with a lot of BI data with customers like uh, Comcast and, and Samsung and others. Essentially a BI implementation of, just like we would do with Google Analytics, what's going on with your website, right? Capturing the information and telling a story. And so whether it's the AP, whether it's something on your personal run, whether it's your fantasy football team, or whether it's your sales performance, it's still a story for you based on what's going on with the data. It's just a different take on it than dashboarding. It's, you know, everybody sits down and tells the story. This is a way to try to keep data scientists from having to spend that much time actually walking people through dashboards. Okay. Thanks, everybody. I'll, I'll be around if anybody has questions.